We went into the Agri-Environment Climate Change Scheme this year, or put an application in and, and we're fortunate to be uh, accepted into that. And as part of that, we decided to change some of these margins, which were pretty scrubby grasses, which did a, a great job from a beetle bank point of view. But we were conscious that there were no real sort of nectar producing plants in them. So we decided to use that opportunity to actually turn these around and create much more beneficial margins with a wide variety of plant species in them. We wanted a wide variety of clovers. We've got some phacelia and uh, one or two bits of borage in here. You can probably pick out some little yellow rattle, which is the yellow plants in amongst it. And we've got some crimson alcyke and red clover in here, as well as some vetches. So a really broad range of pollinating type plants. I think we are doing it on a more sort of broad brush basis and saying that we're just doing something that's going to benefit us, going to benefit the bee population. Um, hoverflies are parasitic to aphids. Aphids are a damaging um, uh, insect to cereal crops, for example, uh, and other crops as well. So, you know, if we build up beneficial populations, we get a, a spin-off um, from, a, from a crop protection point of view, which is really important. It reduces our need for insecticides, um, which we, to be honest, have rarely used for a, a lot of years, which is good. What it does also, of course, is create a, a better buffer to the hedgerows and the trees along the hedge line um, from, from the activities that we normally carry out within the field. But to have large buffer zones here means that, you know, the, the, um, the base of the hedge, which is a, a, you know, a, a wildlife haven for all manner of different um, beasties, um, you know, both birds, insects, etc., um, brown hares, for example. We, we ploughed it, cultivated it. We didn't need any specialist equipment to do that. So uh, we have a, an annual maintenance requirement to top it and remove the toppings um, to help competition between the different plants. The only other thing we've got to make sure is that we don't let invasive species come in. So if we find any docks or thistle, we'll have to walk around with a knapsack and just knock these out. I think the benefits of the farm of growing these pollinator mixes is we get the, the obviously the bees it'll maybe help pollinate my oilseed rape crop and it will also have some of the good bugs will kill off some of the bad bugs and that would uh, benefit my yields so it could be beneficial. It's vitally important we have pollinators. From a production point of view they contribute about 600 million per annum to the UK agricultural economy but also the variety of habitats that make Scotland Scotland so our heather moorlands, um, our woodlands, they all rely on pollinators. Wildflower strips like this are brilliant, they provide a good pulse of food in summer but it's important to consider what food is about the entire period the pollinators are active. So you can get agri-environment funding for establishing flower rich margins but if that's not a route that you want to go down then there's easy alternatives so for example you could just simply not spray the outer 10 metres off a crop and let the natural wildflowers regenerate in your crop margins. So things like cutting your grassy field margins late in the season can help increase the diversity of wild plants, especially if the grass cuttings are lifted. Pollinators are struggling and there's a range of pressures that they're faced with. That includes loss of flower rich habitats, it includes afforestation and also climate change, pathogens. So they're faced with a range of pressures and it's important that we take action now to help preserve these vital insects.